This video is sponsored by Curiosity Stream. Underdog, or A Dog's Courage if you're watching the English dub, is a 2018 South Korean animated film following the story of a group of abandoned dogs as they try to survive on the streets and seek out to find paradise out in the wild, far away from any humans. The reason I was particularly interested in looking at this film is that it's made by the same company that produced Leafy, A Hen Into The Wild, which came out in 2011. Which if you saw my review on that, I absolutely loved that film, as it not only had gorgeous animation and music, but also told a very mature and complex story that had some incredibly dark moments in it, considering its PG rating. Underdog is not only produced by the same studio, but also written and directed by Oh Sung Young, who originally directed Leafy, along with additional director now, Lee Chan Baek. So naturally, I was pretty hyped for this film, especially with the fact that this film is actually rated a 13 plus rather than a PG. And upon watching, yeah, this film definitely has its fair share of dark and emotional moments. But does it live up to or even surpass the bar that Leafy had set? Well, let's take a look. But first, a quick shout out from this video sponsor, Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream is a subscription streaming service that offers thousands of documentaries and non-fiction films. We have content ranging from science, history, music, sports, and of course, my personal favorite, dinosaurs. With new shows being added every week, Curiosity Stream is available worldwide on all sorts of devices and platforms, including Android, iOS, and Xbox One. If you'd like to give Curiosity Stream a try, you can go to curiositystream.com forward slash stevereviews, or click the link in the description below, which will give you 25% off, making it only $14.99 for the entire year, which equates to only $1.25 a month which when you compare that to the prices of other streaming services, is ridiculously cheap. That's curiosity.com forward slash Reviews. Thank you so much for listening guys, now back to the review. The film opens with some beautiful looking background shots, accompanied with a soft piano theme playing alongside. And is that a 101 Dalmatians reference? We see an owner taking his pet out to the woods, where he must be one of the nicest owners in the world, as he doesn't force his dog to wear a collar, gives him an abundance of food, and even plays fetch with him. What a great guy, an example to us all, and uh... Oh. Well, less than three minutes in and we're getting a rendition of that one scene that made everyone cry in The Fox and the Hound. Oh, this is going to be a fun watch, I can tell. The dog, named Moonchi, waits for his owner, but he doesn't return. Soon he's met by a group of stray dogs who inform Moonchi that he's been abandoned and offer him to stay with them. Just before the gang head off, they spot another dog who also gets abandoned by their owner, causing Moonchi to realize and accept that the same has happened to him. They head back to the stray dog's place and, uh, uh, Okay, that's actually the Buddhist peace symbol, YouTube, not the swash sticker. Please do not demonetize me. The dogs are soon chased by a dog catcher on a motorbike, but after an intense chase scene, manage to escape. Moonchi has shown the stray dog's hideaway, and uh, uh, hey, is that a leafy reference? Moonchi and the other dogs head into town, where it's apparent that most of the other humans don't treat them too kindly. We cut back to their shelter, where we get a pretty heart-throbbing moment. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Less than 20 minutes in and we've already had two gut-wrenching scenes. Not only is the death itself saddening, but just the way the sick little dog is still adamant that the owner will come back to rescue them. We don't deserve dogs. This in turn causes Moonchi to finally accept that his owner will never come back for him either. And as a symbol of that, 
he gets rid of the tennis ball that he was given. Whilst out exploring the area, he comes across a family of wild dogs living up in the mountains and decides that he wishes to join them as he's horny, uh, I mean wanting to be free. Moonchi heads up the mountain and asks to join their pack, but they reject him, saying that he's not built for the wildlife. Meanwhile, another one of the stray dogs is chased down by the dog catcher and Kor, in a pretty brutal way. Which, by the way, thinking about it now, we never actually see this dog again in the rest of the film. The others state that he was taken to the shelter, but even when we see the shelter later on, we don't see him there. So either the film forgot about him, or he was quite literally beaten to death in this moment. Christ, this film is beginning to reach plague dog levels of depression. I need some positive stuff to help maintain my emotional sanity. This is why I'll never be happy. With another dog captured, the strays argue about whether staying in town is the best thing for them. Moonchi decides that he wants to live up on the mountains, and so breaks into a goat farm in order to try and impress the mountain dogs. The mountain dogs aren't impressed however, stating that all this will do is further anger the humans. The local dog catcher is called out, which ends up in Moonchi and the young pup Tori being captured. The two are brought back to the shelter, which not only has appalling conditions, but is also used as a puppy mill. The same puppy mill that Moonchi was born at. The other mountain dogs come to rescue them, and free the rest of the dogs in the process. Meanwhile, the stray dog's home ends up getting destroyed as the old house is demolished. And is that also a leafy reference? Maybe. With both packs now needing to leave, Moonchi proposes that the mountain dogs and strays join forces, and head for the talked about place in the wild, where they can truly be free of humans. <laughs> yes. Smooth. However, it's not long until the journey that they encounter their first obstacle, the motorway. Oh god, animals trying to cross a motorway? I'm getting some serious flashbacks to animals of farthing wood right about now. And sure enough... <gasps> well, I suppose it had been over 15 minutes since our last character death, so we were overdue. Tori's mum and dad are hit and killed by a tow truck on the motorway, forcing a grieving Tori to go on without them. Jesus, this film just keeps getting darker and darker. Makes you wonder just what horrific thing will happen next. <laughs> Of course, it's not quite the watching Mr. Otter taking a shit scene from Leafy, but it's good to see the poop humor is still alive and well here. Through teamwork, the gang manages to chase down and capture a deer. And though I'm happy for them, I can't help but feel that the triumphant music just feels a little off as they murder a deer right before our very eyes. Oh god, I'm gonna die. I don't want to die. What about my wife, Jessica? What are my children gonna do without me? For the love of god, someone save me! <laughs> ah, what a beautiful Lady in the Tramp reference. Only instead of spaghetti, it's deer guts. The good times don't last long however, because of course they wouldn't, as the dog catcher has managed to track them down through a GPS chip planted in Moonchi. Turns out he's after the dogs, as Barmy, the one Moonchi is hotting over, yeah probably should have mentioned her name sooner, happens to be a rare breed of dog that the dog catcher wants to breed for cash. The dogs decide not to run this time, and instead work together to fight back, where they manage to defeat the dog catcher's dogs including Moonchi as he manages to single-handedly take down one of the dogs, despite never having any combat experience his entire life, and the other dog being twice the muscular build of him. So unless Moonchi translates to English as Mary Sue, I'm calling bullshit on this one. The dog catcher tries shooting the dogs, but in doing so starts a fire in the field which manages to spread incredibly quickly. 
Seriously, it goes from a small fire here to literally engulfing the entire field in the very next shot. Thankfully, with a bit of quick thinking, the dogs are able to get through the fire and actually make it out without any casualties. Wait, are we sure? Uh, uh, yeah, they're all here. Jesus, that's a first. After a bit more walking, the dogs stumble across a house in the country. And though being wary at first, it turns out these humans are good and patch up the dogs from their various wounds. Not gonna lie, for a film that has been pretty dark for the most part, this moment, as rare and heartfelt as it is, also comes across as a little too cheesy. Oh hey everyone, my name's Jessica. Say, have any of you guys seen my husband? So, the dogs have finally managed to find a place where they will be fed and taken care of, and all is good and happy, where the film ends and the credits roll. Wait, no, we still have another 20 minutes left. Thought this would be a nice place to end things off, but let's see what happens. Using the GPS tracker, the dog catcher once again appears and begins giving chase to Moonchie, who manages to get himself caught in a trap. We're caught in a trap. But fortunately, Barmy turns up to save him, and the two manage to overcome the catcher, forcing him to run away and get stranded in a minefield. <laughs> The two then triumphantly make it back to the others, where the film ends, and the credits... Nope, still 15 more minutes left. So despite being in a place of paradise, the dogs decide that it's not for them and continue on their journey. All that is, except for one, who like Moonchie, gets the hornies for a girl and so opts to stay. In what is actually a pretty heartfelt goodbye. The rest of the dogs continue onwards and finally make it to the place of paradise but still need to get through a high barbed fence and the military in order to get there. The dogs make a break for it whilst the gates are open and all manage to get through. All that is, except for Moonchie. Oh god, facing off against the military and after all the tragic events the film has presented us so far and with the dark ending that Leafy gave us? I dread to think how intense this final obstacle is gonna... B? <laughs> This is feeling... a bit goofy? The military give chase to Moonchi, who is now holding a live grenade in his mouth. Why he's doing this, as he has no idea what a grenade is, I have no idea. But he somehow manages to dupe all of the trained military guards, and manages to use the explosion from the grenade... to propel himself over the wall. Okay... Where the film actually ends and the credits roll. I'm conflicted. Okay, before I go any further, let's take a quick look back at Leafy, a hen into the wild. Oh, and by the way, there are gonna be a couple of spoilers for Leafy, just in case you don't wanna hear them. Leafy was a fantastic film, with complex characters who go on an emotional journey and end up having well-developed character arcs, all of which contributed to the main narrative of the film, which is to demonstrate the struggles of family relationships and the sacrifices you make for your loved ones. All of which comes nicely together at the end, which not only offers an incredibly dark and bold way to end the film, but also demonstrates how far the characters have come. This film does not offer that same level of complexity. For starters, there are just too many characters, with half of them not having any real distinct personality or development. The two small dogs seem to be there for the cute factor. The stray dog which gets captured is quite literally forgotten about in the film. And even the two parent characters which are killed on the motorway hold no impact on the rest of the film. Sure, we get the one scene where the characters go off grieving. And then after that, they're never mentioned again. And even their son Tori has no change or development from their passing. As sad as their deaths are at the time, it has no change on the film's outcome. Compare this to the duck deaths in Leafy, which not only drives the plot forward for her to adopt the duckling, but also fuels her emotional hatred she has towards the weasel, which again, pays off at the end. Having all these characters does feel like it stretches out the runtime, which being 1 hour and 40 minutes is actually quite long for a typical animated feature. We not only have the plot of Moonchi meeting the stray dogs, but also the subplot of him trying to impress the mountain dogs. 
I think this could have been streamlined better had the mountain dogs not been a part of the story and instead just have their characters fused in with the stray dogs. I know some will argue that the point of the mountain dogs was to offer Moonchi a motivation for freedom, but honestly, I felt that you already got that after seeing the sick dog passing away. And it was the German Shepherd character that proposed the character's head for the wild. Also in terms of story, I think like a bad sex life, the plot just blew its load too quickly. We have so much emotion thrown at us in the first half, Moonchi getting abandoned, the little dog passing away, the stray dog getting captured and beaten, the parents dying on the motorway, and then after that, it just kind of fizzles out and loses momentum. I think the climactic showdown at the end should have been with the dog catcher facing off with Moonchi and Barmy, where the dogs do actually find their paradise, but because of the GPS tracker, the catcher tracks them down, and so in order to get that true freedom, they need to defeat him. Hell, I think even the previous showdown with the catcher in the grassy meadow could have made for the final fight as the entire field is set ablaze. Because the final confrontation with the army just feels silly and underwhelming. And doesn't really leave you with an impact once the credits start rolling. But what about the animation? Well, again, in my previous review of Leafy, I heavily praised the film for its 2D animation because it looked absolutely gorgeous, even arguing that it was reaching Studio Ghibli levels of quality. In this one, however, they've adopted a CG 2D hybrid where the main cast of characters are 3D models with a 2D palette, and don't get me wrong, aesthetically it's done pretty well, for the most part. But I can't help but feel that this is a downgrade from the 2D animation we got in Leafy, as the 2D can offer more dynamic movement, better facial expressions, and lighting that the 3D models can't quite match. And this is made even more apparent when some of the minor characters are still animated in traditional 2D and are put alongside our three-dimensional cast, which can look pretty awkward at times. I'm guessing this was done as a budget saver, and I can understand that, but I still believe a full 2D film would have looked so much better. But at least the backgrounds are still looking awesome and we get a nice selection of shots throughout. Another thing that is still awesome is the music. The music still holds up to the high quality with a fantastic musical score. It really is one of the strengths of the film. From the soft piano which will tug at your heartstrings, to the triumphant orchestra that will get you pumped, There is also an English dub of the film titled A Dog's Courage. I've not watched the entire English version, but from the key scenes I viewed, it seems like the dark and violent moments still seem to be intact, with even the poop scene still making it in. And thankfully, the musical score also seems to have remained this time round, unlike with Leafy. Though the dubbing itself is a bit hit or miss. Obviously, I'd recommend the original Korean dub with subtitles, but if you're not a fan of reading text or struggle with it, then the English dub should suffice just fine. In conclusion, I know I've made a lot of jabs at the film which may make it sound like I didn't enjoy it, which isn't the case at all. I honestly did enjoy the film, and would still recommend people checking it out. It does still offer an emotional story, which presents a strong moral against the cruelty of animals, which is a message I think we can all get behind. And the film itself also opened up a funding for rescuing abandoned animals, where donators were rewarded with figures of Moonchi and Barmy. So fair play to them for that. The film made over $7 million at the worldwide box office, which though not as good as Leafy's $11 million gross, it's still a nice result. And the film did manage to win Best Animated Feature Film in 2018 at the Golden Silk Road Media Awards, and won a special award at the Seoul International Cartoon and Animation Festival in 2019. So yeah, although comparing to Leafy this film may come out as the underdog, as a standalone piece, it's a decent watch, and is definitely something that I wouldn't recommend you stray away from.